How did the Iranian embassy rescue mission start? Well, because were you were you known as a man with no gloves or something? Like? That's it. What is the what was that? <laughs> well, uh, it's in the book, but actually, um, it started in the thirtieth of April, nineteen eighty. He finished on fifth of May, nineteen eighty. Um, with the resolution, should we say? <clears throat> but the fact is that, like everybody else, I wore gloves all the time. However, after the six day siege, when we were going to do the resolution, I, I was sat watching the snooker in next door in the in the um, Royal College of General Practitioners. So I was sat in there watching the snooker when we got the final call to go and rescue the remaining 19 hostages. Predominantly, always, I took my gloves off and put them down my body armour. But when I went down to sit down at once to watch the TV, because Cliff Thorburn was playing Alex Higgins in the final of the Embassy World Championship, quite a few of us were interested in snooker. I used to play it whenever we went abroad, whenever we could. So I was sat there watching it when I got the call. By then, I was a team leader, blue team. I was going to lead the assault. <laughs> so I got outside after they um, executed the hostage. I got outside and realised we was gone into position. The gloves weren't down there. I left them on the table. So when I was watching Suka, that was the only time I didn't put them down my body armor. I got outside and we've gone into position. And then I realized, but the, the picture that's in the book and the other pictures, you'll see a, a picture of me taken by the police snipers with a guy with no gloves in the middle. Well, that was me. <laughs> um, so that's how I got the name Rusty Fermin, the man with no gloves because everybody else in the team had their gloves on. People must have thought he must be a mad now, bastard with and, no gloves. Yeah, and he was caught in the group, my group, like that, with the weapon, with no gloves on. But you can bet your life, I wasn't going to go back to pick the gloves up to go back out again. So that's how, that's how that came about. Do you get in trouble for that? Uh, or is it not, not a big issue? It, well, it, it, nobody knew until the pictures arrived, okay? And um, nobody really knew because it's not like today, you know, Zoom is across the world in five seconds. Mm -hmm. In those days, in 1980, um, yeah. they weren't interested in Rusty Fermin. They were interested in the assault that was being shown on TV. You've seen it probably a hundred times you know, at the front, the, the, um, on the balcony and all that type of stuff. I was at the back door with my team, ready to go in through the library, which we did. So nobody would have seen that until later because <clears throat> it was never broadcast. However, once the pictures became available, which I've got, um, it was quite obvious that the police snipers had taken the pictures and it was the police who gave me the photos when we went to Scotland Yard. Um, a little bit later on, we made statements and stuff of what happened and who did what and so on. Um, and it, that's when it really became to light that it was me. Um, that was uh, at least a year later that I found out. I knew I didn't have any gloves on, but it wasn't broadcast anywhere. Mm -hmm. So... That's how that happened. Who was that going in trying to rescue 19 people? Because did they, they already, they killed a hostage as well, did they not? Yeah, they, they killed Lavasani. Lavasani was the Iranian pressure attaché. Only a young guy, lad. Um, and he was the pressure attaché. But he was sticking his chest out inside to the, um, the six terrorists because of what they were doing, he didn't agree with it. So, cut a long story short, 
Um, what they did is they took him down and put him, tied him to the, the banister inside the Iranian embassy, inside the front door. They tied him there, and then Faisal, the second in command of the terrorists, didn't know that at the time, this is afterwards. Faisal was the one who, having done that, we were, we were ready to go, but we weren't in position. When their shots were heard, bang, 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 three shots, nobody still knew if there was a shooting in the ho inside the embassy. They heard the shots, but let's be honest, without proof of murder in my day, without proof of murder, Maggie Thatcher, yes, three definite shots, but nobody was there to say, oh, they've killed somebody. So it was still a waiting game for us because if it had just been somebody firing three shots into the ceiling, as a bit of a come on, as they call it, let's see what happens if you fire a few shots. <clears throat> well, it wasn't because the terrorists then took Lavasani out the front door and dumped his body on the step. And as soon as he did that, the, there was a couple of police cars went down with the stretcher to pick him up. That was proof of murder on UK soil. Maggie Thatcher gave us the, um, because don't forget, this was still a, a Met Police operation. Okay, we were there to back up the police. Not a lot of people know that, but that's a fact. Um, so the police had dealt with it all the way through. Now we've got the body dumped on the step outside. Maggie Thatcher, um, obviously Prime Minister, it was then decided that the uh, Met Police would hand over the operation to the SAS. That was done on the scruffy old bit of paper, signed over. You now have control. And with that, we were informed, the teams, that we were going to go and rescue the hostages. Nobody knew what else was going to happen, but we had proof of murder. So we all go into the position, it took 16 minutes to get into position covertly. We didn't want to alert them if we could. Remember, they just killed somebody. It took us 16 minutes, top of the building, bottom of the building, balcony, back door, all the surrounding area. And then when we got the go, 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 it took 11 minutes from start to finish for our two teams, the red and blue team, Peace Squadron, to enter the building and um, rescue the hostages. At that stage, there was 26 originally. Some had been let out, one had been killed. There was 19 hostages remaining. So our job was to go in. And the mission was to rescue the hostages. That was the mission rescue the hostages. Once we got that, we entered simultaneously all over the building. It took 11 minutes to clear 56 rooms. Um, five terrorists died. One terrorist got out. 19 hostages were saved. So the mission was achieved. And that took 11 minutes to start to finish. Was that when, because no one knew who the SAS was, is that correct? But because that then it became world news that... The SES, yeah. what you were all about, is, is yeah. that true, or do people already know? No, no. The, I mean, I've been in the SES three years before I realised where it was. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it, that, that's, um, that is true. People had heard about the SES, but that operation is said to be the most iconic um, SES rescue operation especially to be filmed and on UK soil. Did you feel extra pressure on that? Yeah. Because they'd killed someone as well? Yeah. What would happen if they'd killed someone else when you were coming through the windows and the doors? Would you have got fucked for that? Well, you never know because, you know, 
<coughs> it's, it's amazing these day, this day and age. But what I'll say is that in that day, after six days waiting, the guys were like Coral Springs. You know, let me go. Let's do something, you know. Um, and that's exactly what happened. We were allowed to go and do it. We were told to go and do it. And we did it. And the the question he asked about the... Um, is, is this when it, the full front, the SES come from there to there? Mm -hmm. It was like a benchmark, if you, if you like. It raised the benchmark. And people all over the UK had, had witnessed what had gone on. So there was a new camp built, much more heightened security than ever before. Because in the old days, you could go in the front door of the camp as a civilian, walk through it, walk out the back door in the old camp. But now it's, you know, but in my day, after that siege, that's when it, everything was heightened. 